Okay, today we are studying uh, variance, variance analysis. Okay, so what is variance? Uh, variance is the difference between budgeted and actual performance. Budget and standard means the same thing because uh, budget is used uh, in budget we use standard costing. So standard costing is a component of budget. So when we say budget or standard, it means the same thing. Before we look at variance, let's look at types of standards. Okay, so what is standard? Standard is a predetermined performance level. So when you set some something in advance, a performance, it could be cost, it could be time, uh, whatever it is. So it is a target that employee needs to achieve. So we call that standard. So there are four types of standards. Uh, we have current standard, historic or basic standard, attainable or achievable standard, and then ideal standard. So first, let's look at current standard. Current standard is what we are currently using in our budgets. It is what, what we are currently using to see our performance. When we are doing variance analysis, we are using current standard. So using current standard, we reward the performance of employees. Just to give you an example, let's say uh, currently, according to our standard, one unit should be produced in one hour. So one unit, 60 minutes, is our current standard. If employee works faster than 60 minutes, then it means he has performed good. If an employee works slower than 60 minutes, then we know that he has performed bad. So current standard is a standard that we are currently using. So it is what is currently achievable according to uh, the technology, the machine and stuff that we have right now. Next we have is historic or basic standard. Historic or basic standard is not used to reward the performance of employees because this is a standard that we used in the past. So this is outdated standard. So why do we use it? We use it for trend analysis. So we use it to see where we are now and where we were in the past. An example I've written is, let's say, uh, we have 80 minutes uh, per unit in the past. Let's say three years ago, our standard was 80 minutes per unit. But in the past, we were not expert uh, the machines that we had were not advanced. Now with today's machines, with today's expertise, we should be able to do that in 60 minutes. So historic standard is outdated standard, but we use it for uh, performance. Uh, sorry, we use it for trend analysis. We, we want to see uh, where we are now comparing with the past. Next we have attainable or achievable standard. Attainable standard or achievable standard is standard that can be achieved. We don't currently use it. It requires a little bit more efforts than what we currently are doing. So it needs a little bit improve in efficiency. It is not impossible to do it, but doing it would mean 
doing a little bit hard work. An example I give you is, let's say, 50 minutes per unit. If I can do something in uh, 60 minutes, uh, by putting a little bit more efforts, maybe I, I'm able to do it in 50 minutes as well. So attainable standard can be achieved, but it needs a little bit hard work, okay? It is not impossible to achieve. It is possible to achieve, okay? Like ACCA, uh, for some, uh, some might say it is impossible to do, but no, it is possible to do, it is attainable. It needs a little bit hard work. You need to regularly study, okay? It's not like other qualification where you can go and come and give exam, you will pass. In ACCA, you have to study and then you will pass, okay? Next is ideal standard. Ideal standard is standard that is very difficult to achieve. So ideal performance means something that you prefer, but which is not reachable, which is impossible to achieve. You look up to it, but you never think you will reach that position. So ideal standard is when we want 100% efficiency, we don't want any wastage. We want to be working at the best possible uh, situation. We don't actually use ideal standard as well to reward the performance. If we use ideal standard, if we make the conditions very difficult to achieve, what happens is employee become demotivated. So we don't want to demotivate them. When something is unachievable, what do we do? We don't do it at all. Like for some people, ACCA is ideal standard. They believe it is not possible to do it. They know the value. They know it is a good qualification. But the reason they, they don't do it, because they believe it is very difficult to do it. So what do they do? They leave it. They don't continue with it, okay? But what do we, why do we use ideal standard in organization? The reason we use it is uh, for anchoring effect. Anchoring effect means, for example, if I'm throwing an arrow at a distance, now if I want my arrow to travel long distance, what I do is I make the direction of the arrow a little bit higher. The direction might be towards the sky, but my aim is not to hit the sky. I'm making the direction towards the sky so that it can travel long distance. So the same thing is here. I'm focusing, I'm working toward 100% efficiency. I don't expect that I'm 100% going to achieve it. But in doing that, what will happen, my performance will become better than previous. So when you do something harder, which is impossible to uh, achieve, what happens is you improve during that process and your long-term performance will be improved. If today you improve a little bit, tomorrow you will improve more. So it will carry on like that. So organization used use um, ideal standard as anchoring effect uh, so if they don't achieve 100% efficiency, for example, they will receive 95% or 90% efficiency. Another example I will give you is an ACCA. Some students target 90% marks. 90%, 95% marks. Now they don't 100% believe that they're going to achieve that 90% marks, for example. But they are trying harder even if they don't achieve 90% marks, for example, they will achieve 85%, they will achieve 80%. So the key to progressing in ACCA is not to target 50 marks, because if you target 50 marks, even though passing score is 50 marks, after 50 marks, forget about it, but try to target higher marks. For example, target 80%, 90% marks. When you do that, what happens is, if you don't achieve those marks, 
at least you will pass your paper okay so this is human nature what you work for the practice when the actual uh, result comes your actual will be a little bit lower than what you practice for okay so ideal standard we don't use uh, to actually uh, reward our employees the reason we use it so that the long-term performance can be improved and we use it as an anchoring effect for example uh, I said here 30 minutes half hour currently we are producing one unit in 60 minutes and my ideal standard is that I need to do it in half hour so that is half the time so I would try to do it in 30 minutes but even if I don't do it in 30 minutes I might be able to do it in 45 minutes for example so 45 minutes is still better than 60 minutes uh, which I'm currently achieving okay so this is uh, four types of standards basic standards